hear so much language about edges, um, uh, about and people call edges so many things. But when you, when you, as you say, deconstruct it, you you discover there are really only three major things going on with all edges. So uh, once we can learn to differentiate uh, as we're working, uh, how those relate to each other, how they they feed into each other. It surely does simplify the process. And it also opens it up for every single kind of edge that it can exist. Here we have a space with no edges at all except the edges around the space. We have the same thing here, and here, and here, and here. Well, no, we don't need to keep going on with this. The point is that in order for a space to have edges, there has to be a shape. And there can't be a shape without edges. Now we have a shape. Now we have edges. So what is an edge? An edge is a division of space that creates a shape. But that's not the end of the story. Uh, how we perceive the shape depends upon the edge, but depends upon the character of the edge. So we have two edges here. Let's change the character of one of those edges and illustrate what we're talking about. Now, Look at the difference in those two edges. The one on the left is crisp, sharp. The one on the right is slightly blurred. Now that gives us two different characteristics. We have the sharp edge. Of, that's the label that has been given them. It's called sharp edge. It's also called hard edge. The one that's really crisp and clear, well, the one that our eyes will go to actually over a softer edge, which we see on the right slightly softer a little bit more gentle and we can see the difference between those two here let's change the one on the right just a little bit more all right now you can see it's more diffused less defined you might say your eyes are kind of gently now moving from the inside of the shape to the outside of the shape through that edge but on the, the one on the left your eye cannot move from the inside of the shape to the outside of the shape. There's a strict boundary there. And that's why it's called a hard edge, because there's a hard boundary between the negative side, which is the outside, and the positive side, which is the inside. Whereas in the softer edge, there's a slight transition that goes from the positive inside shape to the negative. Let's change it just a little bit more. Now we have even a softer transition. In fact, we hardly see an edge there. We have to sort of imagine it in order to see it. And that's, a, a, that's called a lost edge. That's an edge that we can't really see. We know the division is there. We can imagine the division is there, but we really can't see where the, the positive shape begins and the negative shape ends. Now that's one definition, or one way an edge can get lost, but it can get lost in other ways too. You can see here the value has changed. The positive shape is now closer in value to the negative shape, which makes the edge on the left-hand side less harsh, and the edge on the, or the lost edge on the right-hand side become even more lost. And we can change it and get the value even closer and see what happens. Now it's barely perceptible. The, the edge on the left-hand side hasn't changed in character so much as it's changed in value. But by being changed in value, 
it becomes less harsh. It becomes almost soft. You might characterize that as firm. Maybe lots of words. But look at the one on the right. Almost gone. Now we can see it's not only the character of the edge, but the value of both the negative shape and the positive shape that enable us to see the character of the edge. So an edge can have three major characteristics, hard, soft, or degrees of soft, and lost. And that can also be degrees of lost. And those characteristics can be influenced by the contrast, the strongness of the contrast to a more moderate contrast to a more minor contrast. Here we have dozens of edges. We can explore with this little scene how our eyes respond to edges. Now watch what happens here. As we bring the sharper edges up closer to us, those that have the stronger contrast, as we bring those closer to us, we find that our eyes will go to that point where the edges are sharper and where there is stronger value contrast. But then we throw the whole thing out of focus and we find that we have nothing but lost edges and our eyes want to dance in there with the contrast but they still don't have a place to land. But when we change those lost edges to all soft edges, degrees of softness, our eyes are a little more comfortable but they still want some focus. When we throw some parts of this into focus, we give those edges a little bit more definition making them a little bit harder. Some of them will see that our eyes will go to the, where the edges are the hardest and where there's the strongest value contrast. But there's one more little element we need to add to this and that is the texture of the edges character. The edges are not always uh, straight or curved but a lot of times they have little incidental variations going on in them that uh, carry a kind of texture. Now here are three examples of what I'm talking about. The edge itself can carry these little incidental variations depending upon whether that edge is created by hair or bark or grass or all kinds of things that you can imagine in nature. And so that too has got to figure into these other things we've been discussing. Scott Christensen, in his painting Pole Creek, has given us a really good example of how he's used these things we've been talking about. And look there in the distance that I've just circled. We see lost edges. We see a minor contrast. We see incidental variations all in one little cluster there that enables to see that stuff in distance. Now look at the little section on the left there that I've circled. Behind the green stuff, we see the same thing, the minor contrast, um, lost edges, but then we see the trees in front giving uh, with soft edges, a little bit more value contrast. That enables us then to see one section of stuff behind another section of stuff. Now look down at that little area of rocks and water that I circled. What has he done there? Well, he has the hard edge, he has the strong value contrast, and he has incidental variations in the texture of the edges. And we see a similar thing in that little area in the front on the left there I circled. Almost the same kind of thing. Contrast a little bit stronger, maybe just a little bit more variation of the textures and the edges, but very much the same. But look at this little section on the right over here. Notice that the area of that rock, the rock there that's more horizontal, notice the front part of that rock, he's handled the edges very much the same. We've got the textural variations. We've got a feeling of a softer edge because of the value contrast. The shadow in that rock is barely, barely lighter than the rock than the water is underneath it. That gives us a, a closer value contrast, and makes us feel those edges is not quite so obvious, although that we can see the handling of them, the characteristic uh, and the texture, uh, the incidental texture is very much the same, but the value contrast 
makes them um, a little softer, a little less obvious. But then if you look at the top of the rock, where the very, very light part of the light shining on the rock, making it contrast in value with the water behind it, uh, we see that he has this. He has the smoother, not quite so many uh, textural variations. Very little textural variation, in fact. The harder edge, stronger value contrast, um, makes that more obvious to us. Now, take a look at this little section. Just focus on the edges here. You see that the really the variation in edges there of what makes that little passage interesting. But we see it that way because of the value contrast. If you're looking at the little edges, though, you can see a, a variation of every single thing that we've been talking about. You see hard edges. Look at those. You see the soft or softer edges. Look at those. You see the lost edges. You see strong value contrast. You see moderate value contrast minor value contrast, and within all that you see incidental variations in that one, one little package, that one little passage. Now, chances are you walk up to Scott's painting, that will probably be where your eye goes first. Now let's take a look at a passage just the opposite, the one in front here. You see how close the value contrast is? You see how soft all the edges are? You don't see very many incidentals at all. Now look at this little passage. This is incidentals, almost all incidentals, but you notice how soft the edges are of those incidentals. And that's one thing I really wanted to show you, that an incidental, a textural incidental, does not have to be hard edge. You can find them in soft edges, and in some cases even less edges sort of lost. But what I want you to notice about these two passages in front is because those edges are soft, because they're close in value contrast, and we don't see harsh incidental texturals, our eyes flow right through those into those areas of the stronger contrast and the sharper edges. Now this is what this course is all about, these three major um, elements of edges, the characteristic of edges, the value influence of those edges, and the textures of those edges' characters, in other words, the incidental variations. We see within each one of those, with the characteristics, we have the hard, the soft or softer, and the lost. With the value influence around those edges, we have the strong contrast, the moderate contrast, the minor contrast, and then those edges themselves ha can have incidental variations in textures. In a painting, if we bring thing, if we bring an area into focus, into sharp focus, I was gonna, if it's more in focus or if there's more attention given to it than in other areas of painting, that's where the eye's gonna go to first. And then to the degree that we focus or within the focus and the value contrast is a part of that focus, but the two, we can control where the eye moves along the painting, within the painting, according to how we give emphasis or focus to various areas in the painting. And edges play a large role in that. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.